Well, um, as you said, I'm a childhood obesity prevention researcher. Um, I've been here since uh, 99, came from Arizona. And in Arizona, the uh, population that I worked with uh, primarily was uh, Native American uh, population. So I worked with the Pimas who have, as you may know, the, um, the highest rates of obesity and type 2 diabetes in the world, actually. And um, they're located near Phoenix. And a related tribe is the Tohono O'odham, which are closer to Tucson. And so that's, that's kind of where I cut my teeth in the obesity prevention uh, field. I um, did my work with those groups. And one of our primary studies was a large multi-site trial called the Pathways Study. It's the second largest school-based obesity prevention study that's been conducted um, in the nation so far. The largest one is called a cat, the CATCH trial. Um, and we worked with tribes uh, in uh, New Mexico and also in South Dakota. And the other universities involved in that work were um, the University of New Mexico, also Johns Hopkins, and uh, UNC was also involved in, in that work. So that's where my, my background was prior to coming here. When I came to uh, Arkansas, then uh, the reason I was recruited uh, is because they, uh, a study that was funded by USDA called the Delta Nutrition Intervention Research Initiative needed someone um, who specialized in childhood obesity specifically because they were targeting the uh, Delta area of Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi to um, try to reduce um, obesity and any kind of nutrition related uh, diseases in those three states. And they had a number of people who uh, specialize in adult disease prevention, but, but not anyone who was working specifically in childhood obesity. And since my emphasis is in rural, high risk um, populations, uh, that's how I ended up coming to Arkansas, basically, <laughs> and working in the, the rural delta. So um, I've been doing work with that population this whole time and uh, just recently, as Alinda was saying, got funded again to um, concentrate on the Delta and Central part of the state with our new uh, gardening study. But I have other projects, um, one that's been funded for two phases, uh, RWJF stands for the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and they're the largest private foundation in the country that funds childhood obesity uh, research work. And you may or may not know that just recently in, the, in this past year, um, the Robert Wood Johnson uh, Center for Childhood Obesity, it's the national center funded by this group, is located in Little Rock now. And it's actually operationalized through ACHI, which is um, run by uh, Dr. Joe Thompson, our Surgeon General for the state. So we... RWJ have had a number of different places nationwide. They could have put that center and they chose to put it in Little Rock. So uh, that was a good thing. Anyway, my, my sports study is uh, funded by RWJF and we're about to start our third phase and that's a school-based obesity prevention um, study. And most of my work is uh, school-based projects. That's an elementary school study and the garden study is uh, middle school kids. And I'll just say that all these projects involve um, <clears throat> some kind of physical activity intervention and some kind of intervention that addresses the foods that are served in the schools. So we've done things through the school food service. We've also addressed what's called competitive foods, which are all the foods outside of the USDA funded uh, school uh, lunch and breakfast program. So, so for example, when, when we talk about reducing or, or changing the types of competitive foods, it would be things that are given to kids for snacks in the classroom or rewards, like when teachers would give candy bars for rewards, or you'd have classroom parties and people would bring in cupcakes and that kind of thing. We address changing those, that, that food environment in addition to the school lunch environment. And then we promote physical activity in our studies. So we have uh, walking programs that we do, and we've also um, uh, brought in additional activities for recess and, and PE programs. So. Um, and, that those, and then we also look at um, making sure that the schools that we work in are meeting the state policies that are already in place. For example, when Act uh, 1220 of 2003 was enacted, and that's that statewide BMI initiative uh, here in the state, which we can talk about some later if you want to, um, that uh, required also there was the establishment of a child um, health advisory committee and that mandated that there be um, school wellness committees in all of the schools, but most schools didn't have wellness committees that were actually 
functional. So any school that we work in, we help them get their school wellness committee going and um, try to operationalize our programs through the school wellness committee. So um, that's something we've been doing for a while. And I'll just finish with the, the garden study that we're about to start. We decided to target middle school kids because almost all of these types of programs tend to uh, focus on elementary school kids. And part of the reason for that is that um, you want to you know, reach kids as young as possible. And we usually choose third and fourth grade children because that's also the age when they're cognitively able to self-report their diet and physical activity to us. Um, but for this one, we decided to um, go to middle school and with the gardening program because um, we also wanted to address other risk behaviors and the social risk behaviors that we're trying to address through our gardening program as well as reduction of fighting, which is the biggest social risk behavior at the middle school level, and also absenteeism and help encourage um, um, more achievement in school. So we're figuring that those kids who don't have anywhere else to go, so in other words, you know, your school athletes have their athletic programs to be involved in and they can bond with those peers and those teachers and the kids who are, you know, want to act in school plays or be in the choir, or, you know, do that kind of thing. Well, they have those peers in, as a way to bond through school and find a place to go and somewhere to do in an identity. Um, and the really academic kids have things like Odyssey of the Mind and Quiz Bowl and debate team and all that. But what about those other kids? The ones who are getting in trouble are the ones that are less bonded to school, have less teacher connectedness, and so our idea was to provide them some way to connect with the school and with some staff at the school. And so that's what our garden study is about, is um, giving them a way to be physically active at school such that the most sedentary kids will probably get the most benefit out of the gardening program. Um, and then um, also address, so we're addressing obesity and we're addressing social risk behaviors at the same time.